Hi! In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a less common situation that you may run into when adjusting load sensing controls of certain open-loop variable displacement pumps and I want to showcase a wireless system that I used to monitor the pressures and the flow during the adjustment process. A lot of sources recommend checking and setting the load sensing delta P when the pump is standing by, in other words, when it's dead headed against the closed center of the directional control valve and the load sensing signal line is connected to tank. And this is fine and okay for many systems and pumps, but not all because in certain cases the standby pressure can be significantly higher than the actual delta P and for such systems adjusting the delta P from the standby alone usually results in an incorrect setting which is exactly the case of the hydraulic system that we are about to see here now uh, before showing anything else I would like to explain how this video came to be so our next door neighbor is a drilling company called Drillcon Iberia and by the way, many thanks to them for allowing me to use their shop to make the pictures and the videos that we'll see in a minute. They are a great company to work with, very professional and very efficient at what they do. So they asked for our help to verify the hydraulic system of the core drilling rig that was leaving for a job site. And by coincidence, I had just finished building the latest version of the wireless monitoring system that I had been working on for some time and I was dying to try it out in the field, so when this opportunity presented itself, I grabbed my new gear and literally ran to their shop without any preparations whatsoever. Which is exactly why, aside from the load sensing and wireless monitoring stuff, you will also see that I obviously do not know anything about making videos, I filmed everything with an iPhone, in crappy lighting, and I apologize for that in advance and I ask you to dismiss the bad picture quality and pay attention only to the technical aspect. And second, uh, safety issues. You will see me do all the connections and the adjustments without gloves and this is something that I do not recommend. Not because it looks unprofessional, which I admit it kind of does, but because hydraulic oil is bad for your skin. Now, having said that, let's get back to our adjustments. So, the uh, hydraulic circuit of the rig, at least the part that we'll consider here, is extremely simple and is nothing but a textbook low center load sensing arrangement. It's composed of the main pump, which you can see over here, it's below the tank, and this is the Rexroth A11 VLEO 130, the control is DRS, which is the pressure compensator with load sensing. You can see the control valve over here, and you can see that it's a two-spool control. Also, it's worth to mention that this is a very old unit. Uh, it's hence the it's from 96, hence the Bruning House Hydraulic nameplate, and I'm sure I'm not pronouncing the name right. And um, I think it's pretty cool. These are becoming a rare sight these days, so it's pretty cool. Uh, then you have the close center directional control valve over here. Uh, you can tell by these lines that it's pilot pressure controlled and again it's a pretty standard valve. Uh, normal closed center and loads the load sensing line when the spools are centered and it runs one, two, three functions. So nothing special here. Uh, as I said before this is a core drilling rig and I uh, will be checking and adjusting the uh, delta P by activating the drilling head rotation, which is the easiest way because it allows me to work with continuous flow as compared to a cylinder function, for example, in which case the test will be limited in time by the cylinder's travel. And uh, to be able to fully monitor this hydraulic system, I installed uh, one pressure gauge in the load sensing line and a second pressure gauge and a flow meter in the pump discharge port. So let us check out the test gear. So here you can see that I tee into the load sensing line, connecting the pressure sensor, Here I slap the transmitter onto the frame, connecting the sensor board, I turn it on, boom, the first one is done, here's the second one, this is the pressure sensor, 
connecting the sensor board to the transmitter, connecting the pressure point. This here is the flow sensor and boom, we are done. Uh, now, this flow meter here, which you can also see over here, this is a pretty standard Parker flow meter. I have the nameplate over here. The model is SCFT600. And since this is the analog version, which has the 0 to 3 volt output, connecting the flow sensor to the wireless monitor was a piece of cake. Uh, so the mechanic who had revisioned the rig and who's a very experienced guy, by the way, did mention to me that he had some trouble adjusting the load sensing setting and that the standby pressure wouldn't go lower than something like 30 bar, which is about 420 psi. And when he tried to lower it, he actually ended up with a very slow and very sluggish system. And in the end, he had to raise the standby above 40 or above 600 psi to get it running. So uh, before changing anything, let us have a look at how this system runs with such an adjustment. Okay, so let's go back a little bit. This is the rig's control panel. This knob below over here is the pilot pressure control for the directional control valve. Activating the drilling head rotation, I'm going to use it. Uh, actually, this analog pressure gauge over here shows this pilot pressure, so it's kind of convenient. And this is an Android phone that's running the monitor app. So the app is scanning four transmitters, it finds the first one, it finds the second one, we are getting names, getting data, let's rearrange, starting the first one, starting the second one, Hiding the headers to get more room. Uh, don't mind these here. These are the logger tabs and uh, they're here because I had been logging some tests before and I actually forgot to close them. Uh, so the, the top reading over here is the first channel of the transmitter number one and this is the pressure in the load sensing line. This here is the second reading is the, the first channel of the second transmitter. This is the pump pressure. Uh, this field over here is the real-time math tab, which is calculating the difference between the pump discharge port pressure and the signal line pressure. And it's very convenient because it gives me the direct delta P readout. And here in the bottom we have the second channel of the second transmitter, which is the pump flow. So right now the directional control valve spool is centered. The standby you can see here is uh, pretty high, 47 bar, which is about 670 psi. And uh, let's run it. So I turn the knob. The pilot pressure goes up. We're getting response right about here at maybe 5, 10 bar. All's good. Pilot pressure goes up. The flow goes up. So we are getting 80 liters per minute, 41 something, 42 bar of delta P. The pilot pressure keeps going up. And I think right around this point over here, you will see actually that this system becomes very unstable. It, start, it starts to self-oscillate and it happens sometimes with load sensing systems and I'll talk about this in a minute, but for now, let's not worry about this uh, for now. So you, you see here it's self-oscillating. Don't mind that. And right around here we are hitting the maximum displacement. Uh, and as I keep increasing the pilot pressure, the directional control valve spool shifts completely and the pressure drop drops to uh, 20 bars. So we have full flow, the spool is shifted completely, the pressure drop right now dropped because the spool is completely often open and actually this here is a very very respectable full flow pressure drop for a compact core drilling rig.
and it is so low because the rig is well built and the lines are properly sized so the guys at Drilka Iberia do know how to put together efficient rigs. Anyhow, going on. Now I dial back down the, the pilot pressure back down, passing the unstable region and I bring it back to in standby at about 47 bar. So, it works, yeah. But we did see that the delta P in the flow regulating region in, is indeed quite high. 47 bar, 44 bar here, it's quite high. And we all know that the higher the delta P, the higher the energy loss, and we do not want that. We want the delta P to be as low as possible. So let us go to the next video and see if we can maybe lower this setting. Okay, so here you see me holding the phone next to the pump control. The pump control is in the back. This here is the adjustment screw for the delta P. And once again, this is the load sensing line pressure. This is the pump pressure. This is the delta P. And this is the flow just as before. Here I actually turned the adjusting screw a little bit in. So the delta P, the delta P, the standby increased to 45 bar. And yeah, you see, I turn the adjusting screw out and you can see that the standby pressure does drop, does indeed go down. But right about here, as we hit the 30 bar, you can see that I keep turning the adjusting screw to the left, but the standby pressure does not change. You see, I move it to the left and nothing happens with the standby pressure. It's a stable 30 bar. So you may think maybe there is a mechanical limitation of sorts inside the control and maybe uh, turning the screw doesn't affect the spring inside anymore. So why don't we find out? Let's turn the directional control valve on, ask our pump for some flow and see how it will respond. Once again, note that right now the standby pressure is at 30 bar, which is about 420 psi, and this seems kind of okay. So we are turning on the directional control valve. We should be getting some flow here. And boom, what do we have here? So you can see that we asked our pump for flow, and as soon as, that, as soon as we opened the directional control valve, the pressure drop dropped to a very low value, 4 or 5 bar, which is about 50 psi, and this is obviously not okay. So, this here is a perfect example of how some open loop pumps with load sensing control can have a standby higher than the actual delta P. So, let me see if I can adjust it. You see, I turn the adjusting screw back in and the pump control immediately responds by increasing the delta P and consecutively the flow. You see, dial it back in, turning it to the right, the delta P goes up and the flow goes up. So now, it's, we have the delta P of 21 bar and if we turn the directional control valve on the standby pressure goes back up to 32 bar so you see we are getting the delta p of 21 and the standby of 32 so there you have it now bullet points bullet point one once again some load sensing pumps due to their design can have standby higher sometimes significantly higher than the actual delta p it is important to know that and it's important to understand that in such cases your best option to check and adjust the delta P is by monitoring it directly when the pump is at mid stroke, when the pump is pumping. Bullet point two. Whenever you work on a load sensing system, it is very good to have not one but two pressure gauges, one in the signal line and one in the pump outlet. 
And using gears that does the delta P calculation for you is a great helper. And if you can monitor the flow, of course, it's even better. And if you can do all this wirelessly, you are in a troubleshooter's heaven. And now an aside, uh, you, you can ask me, well, why should I worry about having the load sensing solo in this particular case? I mean, come on, this is a drilling rig. It will run flat out most of the time anyways, and we already saw that when the pump is maxed out and the spool is shifted completely, the pressure drop is very low, so why should we care? And I say that, yeah, you are right, it will work, of course, but don't forget that there are two more functions that may require partial flow, and in any case, making the system a little bit more efficient is never a bad thing, but I do see your point. I mean, we are in a mine, the energy is supplied by the mine, so we don't give a crap about the power bill. And our water cooler is big enough to absorb whatever inefficiency we can throw at it. However, do you remember the violent self-oscillations that we saw in the first video? Let me go back to it, let me go back to it, it's over here. Yep. So, right about at this point, you see? Pretty violent. And now have a look at this very same system after we've lowered the delta P. So we right now are facing the standby of 34 bar. I'm doing basically the same thing, increasing the pilot pressure, the flow goes up. And wait for it, wait for it. Do you see the difference? Right now our instability is far less aggressive and actually above 160 liters the self-oscillations disappears altogether. So this means that our lower setting improved that as well. Pretty cool. Uh, also, it's interesting to note that the delta P in this pump is actually not the same throughout the displacement range you see here. Uh, at low flow, maybe around here, at 42 liters per minute, you have the 24 bar differential, and at uh, 160, you get 21. So, quite interesting, pretty cool. And, um, well, I guess that's it for today. So. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I do hope this was useful or at least interesting. And if it was, please hit the like button. If not, hit thumbs down. And if you're into oil hydraulics and want to know more about the wireless gadgets used in this video, I invite you to visit insanehydraulics.com. Take care, be safe, and goodbye.